Hello there, my name is Kleber Meirelles. I'm an orthodontist, professor of orthodontist, international speaker, uh, giving courses around the world about many topics, but mainly on biomechanics, diagnosis, treatment planning, which is the tripod that will uh, make us better orthodontist. So I'm going to focus now in this class on the one of the topics that we are going to discuss in our online live class on January 21st. This is one very important topic in my mind because uh, it makes us very uncomfortable when we see something like this. A high canine, a impacted canine, buccally or palatally, in the upper arch, lower canines. So this is one topic that I consider important for the clinic, uh, for the orthodontist, because we sometimes don't know what to do when we see this kind of situation. Is it very precise, the mechanics that we use to do the traction? No, it is not, but we can use some mechanics that will help us a lot. For example, the proximity between the crown of the canine and the root of the lateral or premolar or central incisor sometimes makes us very un unsafe in this environment of doing the traction. That's why I'm focusing on this important topic. And there are other topics, of course. We're going to talk about the curve of speed, which is very important also because sometimes it can block our movement. We're talking about the retraction of anterior teeth. This is another biomechanical topic that sometimes will uh, delay our treatments if we don't know how to deal with it. And the last topic of this class is what we do when we have remaining space in our dental arch open or close the space, the indications for that and the biomechanics that we use for doing that, opening or closing space, especially in the lower arch. So this is one of the topics that we're gonna address, the traction of the canine. In this case that I'm showing in this class now, I had this canine close to the lateral incisor root and because of that, what I did is to plan for the, the traction using the right line of action of the force and to precisely remove the crown, the proximity between the crown of the canine and the lateral incisor. And after that, I needed to go buckle with the crown and the root, of course. But as we know, if we are applying a thin arch wire, a very soft arch wire for that, we can't control the movement of the root. We just control the movement of the crown going buckle. But after that, we need to adjust the position of the crown and the root. And that's what I'm going to show to you in this case here. So as you can see, since the beginning, we're doing the traction. We can start doing the force, applying the force in day one. First day when you do the surgery, we can apply the force. We can engage the arch uh, that uh, the, uh, I use for that stainless steel ligatures. And I'm going to show to you in this class how I do that. And there's a, there are some tricks that we can use to avoid, uh, to break the, the, the ligature. And I'm gonna show to you in our online live class. So we here started the, since the beginning doing the traction of the canine. And this is the position of the canine uh, from this panoramic X-ray uh, view. And we have the CBCT view also, so we can see if everything is all right. We can't do the diagnosis of an ankylosed teeth just tooth, just using here the CBCT. But we can have some ideas and we can also during surgery, this is another topic, this is another detail that I'm gonna teach you in our online life class. What, what can we ask for our surgeon? What can we ask for them to do for us to help the traction and to ensure that we are in a good, uh, we have a good prognosis? for doing the traction, I'm gonna show you some aspects that are very important. So here it is, as I showed you before, one important thing is to release the space so you can go safely without contacting the root, the crown, I'm sorry, of the, the, the tooth that is being tractioned uh, with the opposite teeth. And in this case, we use bite ramps, posterior bite ramps for that, and initiating the traction a cantilever here is being used. I'm gonna show you also how to deal with this cantilever. And uh, one important thing, as you know, is to generate the correct line of action of the force 
so you can free the position of the crown, not contacting the root of neighboring teeth. In this case here, the candy lever helped me a lot to go with the force in the direction that I wanted. And after a while, when we have enough room, this is another thing that we need to consider before even initiating to do the traction. You need to tell your patients and their parents that in this case, the palatal displaced tooth, uh, impacted tooth, sometimes it needs three surgeries. The first one is to approach. When we are doing, in this case, as you can see, we are doing a closed uh, er uh, first eruption. In this case, first surgery to access the tooth, the crown of the tooth, and to release the space to save up, to, to remove enough bone and generate the path for doing the traction. The second surgery, sometimes the thick palatal uh, uh, gingiva, it won't allow the, the crown to erupt. So sometimes it prevents the eruption. So we need another surgery for that. And the third surgery, when necessary, is to do the gingival um, plastic surgery because of the, 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 the arch of the gingival margin. And sometimes we need three surgeries for that. So if you tell your, pa your patients in advance, they can plan for they can plan financially for that and they can prepare their spirit for what's coming uh, in this case. Now I am able to go buckle with the crown and we are dealing now with another thing, biomechanical thing that is avoiding the, the, the neighboring teeth to close the space again because the force that we are applying here, it tends to go buckle with the crown of the canine and palatal with the crown of the neighboring teeth and also generating a moment in this crown here and here that tends to close the space again. So we don't want that to happen. So for that, I use what I call an active space maintainer. In this case, I go a little bit more tight on pushing those neighboring teeth so they can generate more space or at least to keep the space so the canine can go safely for its position. Here we have it. And after a while, we'll need to deal now with the inclination of the crown of the canine that came from palatal to buccal. And now we have a different angulation, I'm sorry, inclination, the torque of the canine compared to the other canine. And now we need to deal with that. So here it is the case. Uh, first moment with the cantilever doing the traction. As you can see here, we have the bite ramps in position so we can safely go buckle with the crown. Sometimes we need to do that bite ramps more than once, twice or more than three times uh, because it goes wearing because of the occlusion and depending on the facial type, it can be faster. So we need to go every, every consultation, check if we have enough room, enough space to go buckle with the, the crown. So you can see here that after a while we are blocking it. So we need to increase increase here the bite ramps to save to, to make enough room so the crown of the canine goes buckle without contacting the uh, opposing teeth uh, in this case the other canine in the lower arch okay so we have some yes and then the correction and now we have one thing that we must be aware of which is the inclination of the crown of this canine that came from buckle, from palatal to buckle. And uh, why, is, why do we need to deal with that? It's very simple, guys, because of this. When we do the traction of the canine, let's consider this is the position and it's close to the reality. What's going to happen? We're applying one line of action of the first that calls buckle with the line of action below the center of resistance of the canine. And because of that, we are generating a moment that is rotating the canine, okay, to like this, going buckle with the crown and palatal over the root. And then we need to adjust. So you see here that we have 
the canine in position, yes, good position, but we have clearly two in different inclinations comparing the right canine, the well-positioned canine that uh, didn't need to do the traction with the other one. So we have now to adjust this one. When we do that, when we reach the rectangular arch wire, so we don't need to be a, uh, we don't need to, to deal with that before doing the, uh, with the rectangular arch wire, because we can't do that just using round wires unless we are using auxiliary loops for that. So in this case, what I wanted to do is to wait. So the canine was in its right position. You can see here, we have, uh, after the third surgery, in this case, for doing this arch, this gingival arch, beautiful gingival, gingival arch, and we compare one side with the other one, we see that they are very close, they're very similar in the, uh, the, the gingival margin height because of the surgery, because of the third surgery uh, in this case here. And now we're finishing the case, but for that, for having a very beautiful, very good position of the canine and inclination of the canine and a good function, we, we use this. The palatal, I'm sorry, the, the buccal root torque. Look at this, like this. I wanted to see since the beginning what's going on here. So we have this torque. There are other options. Of course, we can use auxiliary uh, torque loops uh, for this, um, or you can use another uh, auxiliary loop like from coming from the molar, using a box loop for that. So we have many options. In this case, I used the TMA-1729. Why TMA-1729 here? Because of the bracket. The ceramic bracket, they want uh, be very, they aren't very, uh, uh, like they don't resist the, the torque. So sometimes we need, with the stainless steel torque, so sometimes we need to go, like initiating the torque with the TMA, I like to do that because I can apply good torque and uh, because of the softness of the TMA in comparison to the stainless steel, I can apply more torque. And as you know, torque takes time. We need to wait so we can have the correction being made in like three, two or three months. It's always, almost always enough to do the correction of this. So we have it here and when we compare, we see now that we have a good inclination of the crown of the, the traction, the canine that was that, that underwent the traction movement, okay? And here we have before and after. You can see good class one condition. And uh, just for you to see before, uh, they, 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 they init the, we initiated the traction. And here we have using the uh, cantilever we have other options related to the cantilevers. I'm gonna to show to you this in our online live class. We have other types of cantilevers and we can use a two couple system sometime to do the traction and at the same time initiate the correction of the inclination of the crown and the root. So we have some different options that we are gonna discuss in our class. Here we have it doing the traction. As you can see, we're using here the active space maintainer in position. So we are, okay, like pushing a little bit so we can save space to the canine during the movement. And here, the final steps of the correction of the inclination, meaning the torque and the finishing aspect of our occlusion. Good traction, beautiful traction, and if you want to see more about this, you can click in the link of the description of this video so you can go to understand in our, uh, in our uh, site what you are going to see during this class. I'm very excited about this class because I prepared everything with very, very uh, many details about this, many clinical details that will help you a lot in your daily practice when you have this kind of uh, case. Not just this kind of case, of course, because we have four topics for that, for discussing. And we're gonna discuss the curve of speed, how to 
fasten the correction of the curve, the flattening of the curve, the retraction of anterior upper teeth, one of the most challenging phase, uh, phases in our mechanics. We're going to discuss what to do when we have remaining space in the arch wire and the dental arch, how to open the space or to close the space and using biomechanics for that. But before that, we need to understand what we, we, what's the best option, closing or opening, and will depend not just on the space, on the remaining space, but many other aspects that will help you a lot, okay? So now we are uh, at the end of our uh, video here, and I invite you to understand a little bit more about our online live class on January 21st, clicking in the description link, okay? So see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.